Toll. Ja. Ja. Das ist das ist nee, nee, das, die, die Küsse. So. Nee, das ist nicht. Ja. Von ja. You scored a lot of goals from free kicks, but not so many from the open play. Was that because of the guy called Alan Shearer and the center forward position for Lucas Overton? It was more demanding than my ex-wife. <laughs> the only time we have the ball is the guy hungry and desperate for goals. No, and we, we, to be honest, we enjoy very much to supply him. I remember the wrong way on the left side. I'm in the right wing. It's so nice to see. I strike always, make a great move in the box, you know, to try to, you know, uh, to score all the time. We knew that our job is more than assisting, more than score goals. There was very good chemistry. Yeah, your, yeah. Your, we knew he's, he always, before the match, we have a little bit of chat. No, we, soon you get the ball, have a one touch, you whip it, and you say, okay, I will put it in the box for you. But it's not, to be honest, I'm enjoying very much. Uh, I sometimes score as well, like the free kicks, and the open game too. So it was, like I said, I'm delighted to, to score in set pieces. That's, uh, I've been practice all the time when I was 12, 13, all the time on chart the free kicks. I remember we used to, when we used to play 11 by 11, <clears throat> I was only 12 years old. The goal, professional goal, the keeper so small. I just, just kick in the ball over there, no chance for the keeper. So I always try to be better and better, practicing the training round. So really, really enjoy to, to score goals, a lot of free kick goals. You were there, you started that game uh, against Sunderland, the Thai winner derby under Ruth Gullit. Uh, oh, when, yes. Yeah, when uh, he benched Alan Shearer at the <laughs> Rain Soap in St. James' Park with Duncan Ferguson, always uh, also benched. What was from inside, how, how they accepted to be uh, outside of this game of Stein Weir Derby? It was, uh, first of all, it was part of the his end of his period in Newcastle. We find out straight away we knew it because, like you mentioned, one of the important players in a special game, special, special for the fans, for everyone, leaves two key important players out of these matches, like uh, you have a gun in the middle of the head. So we were surprised, everybody was shocking to say how see no Alan starting the match. It was very bad day, rain day, so looked not too good. I believe Rod Gulli knew it, it is the last match for him. He did not win the game. So that happened. It's a shame. And after to imagine leaving our best two target man, Duncan Ferguson, Alan Sheeran in the base for this match, it looked like Rod Gulli put himself in front to everything. But it, like I'm saying, it was very bad. Match result, we knew it. Against Sunderland, it's impossible to lose and go home, but it uh, happened. So, well, it's everybody in shock, and after we know what happened, Ruth Gulli gets sacked, and after a week later, or a few weeks later, arrived Sir Bobby Robson. And uh, <coughs> you qualified for the Champions League with uh, him uh, the last time <coughs> before last season, but uh, let's start with Sir Bobby regime. Tell me more about him. I really I want to show you a picture because with Sir Bobby it was his second game you lost against Chelsea on his debut and the second game you were playing here uh, with Newcastle. Yes, you showed me that yeah. picture. It was wow. It was 24 years ago. Look the second that. game of Sir Bobby Robson here is me with our share and I yeah. want to tell uh, in front of our public what you did for me back then. You <laughs> said that you didn't remember, but yeah. uh, when I uh, wanted an autograph from all of you guys, uh, a lot of you went straight to the coach, but you stepped down, uh, took my notebook and asked all the footballers right. to uh, sign the autographs. It was so polite, you were the greatest guy ever. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm very grateful for you for for what you did, but what you remember from, not from this game, because, but you scored there? Yeah, I remember because I'm watching videos all the time, yeah. that, you know, when people, especially my kids now, they're in YouTube, things like that, and they put all my free kids balls. I never realized, I said to you before, uh, we played CCK, but I wasn't sure it was Moscow or Sofia. Yeah. So, no, of course, it was here, and uh, like I said, you know, many years, uh, it's nice when you come in countries, you know, for me, 
from South America, I've never seen my life would be in Bulgaria. You know, uh, you know, it was for me something nice to know other countries, other cultures, even we came for a short period. But uh, <clears throat> it's lovely to see you, very nice young boy coming to desperate because you don't see us every weekend. Yeah. So I, I feel like a common guy. You need to sign it to this boy. You appreciate how much you support things like that. It was it lovely. Was great from you, really. I remember it like <laughs> it was yesterday. It was 24 years ago. 24 years yeah. ago. Uh, even see the picture, all the shit we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, it was nice times, like to, like I said before. How uh, did Sir Bobby make you this great team uh, from uh, I think 13th uh, the season I before the Champions League? I think Bobby, like Bobby, Bobby was very intelligent. Uh, he recognized straight away what's going on with the team. We was a split team, was a team because Ruth Gulley never ended to pull everybody together. In football, I believe, if you have the dress room, we call it the dress room. Like it happened now with the cast that you can see as a family, as a friend, working everybody for each other together, working hard, that's the key. You see Guardiola is the best, but you can tell Guardiola, you can see all the team, they play as a team. So, plus the quality of the players. But that's to me the key. So Bobby recognizes straight away what's going on with us. He starts to pull our rules. Like uh, everybody had to eat together. Back in the year, you eat and disappear. So wasn't that a team? He started to recognize that situation. He started to recognize we need probably left winger. We need uh, another striker with pace. So he brought Craig Bellamy. He brought Laurent Robert. So make it start to make a balance in the team. So he was so intelligent, experienced. We knew uh, the people of him so much in that time. Into the football, especially he's from Durham, from Newcastle. He all the time, his best, all the time when he speaks, we're talking about so good about the fans. They say, guys, you need to love this club, look at the fans. You know, he start to let them know how important the fans for this, you know, in this, in this club. So, yeah, from there, he, he, like I'm saying, he's, he make it two good signings. We, we, we pull together as a team, we pull together good players. That's the reason we start to work in well. Why did you left? I you, left. You said yes. uh, because of, if I remember correctly, with, uh, because of strained relations with Sir Bobby Robson? What happened in that season? It was quite strange because soon he arrived. I was all the time playing for him. I mean, we played regular in the team. So that season we played Partizan away and it was the playoff before get knocked out. Champions League playoff. Champions League yeah, playoff. Yeah. So I'm a scorer in, in, in the Partizan. And the second game, I didn't play at home because I was injured. And the team lost through penalties. So we didn't qualify to the Champions League. He signed in Lee Boyer, I remember from this United. Yeah. So he started to play him. Lee Boyer, Kieran Dyer sometimes the right. I was feeling like, a, you know, start the season and not playing, not getting bored. He said to me, sir, is there any problems? I need to. I need to improve things, or why, why you know trust to me anymore? No, oh, no, we don't worry. It's a long season. You will, you will get games. But okay, I was quiet. I remember months later, two months later, the situation pretty similar. Uh, that was for me the last thing I, I was expecting. I went to, I went to. We played middle school at home. Sorry, away. Um, we went with the team. And we always bring in two extra players in case any problems to be in the stand. So I wasn't even in the, in the bench, he put me in the stand. So that's for me was, I'm not the person like I can have an argument with somebody I like it and just not speak anything. I, I even when I wasn't in the bench, even in the bench, I go home, took my car, yeah. I called Shepard, the chairman, and back in the year was uh, uh, the CEO, the director was uh, Russell Cushing. So I said, listen guys, I don't want to get any problems in here. I like the club. I need to go because I'm not playing any more football in here. I want to play. I'm only 28, 29. I've got energy. So, so no, we don't worry yet. No, I said, let's go. Let me go and I will do it. So I'm gone. Bobby Robson the last day. No, what are you doing? Where are you going? I said, sir, come on. Please. Did you try to persuade you to stay? Yeah, well, but you know. It was very politician. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby always very clever, <laughs> as he was his experience. 
So yes, I move. I move to. I didn't realize. But you returned. Wasn't. Yeah, of course. Eighteen months later, I was. Was there an interest from Liverpool back then? Yes, in the yeah. last day, if I already had given my word to Newcastle, you know, I remember the same day, the last day of transfers, I was driving to on the way to Newcastle. Any regrets Rafa, that you didn't try at Liverpool? Rafa Benitez, one of the agents, rang me to say, you know, Rafa wants you to come to here to Liverpool. So listen, you know, it's the last day, I've already spoke to Newcastle, and Newcastle is like a, my second home, so I, I never want to leave the club. So yes, I made my decision, come back to Newcastle. Graeme Sooner was the, the manager. Yeah, I remember. Let's talk about West Ham and Leicester periods. You were in your 30s back then. Uh, did the Premier League become a harder place for you because when you are 33, 34 and with this pace? You, I think uh, the, the, the Premier start to become, uh, uh, I will say, slightly changed, you know, uh, very physical. Uh, I think uh, the players start to look after themselves much better. You know, as you see now, they are, they are really, really, I will say, 99% professional. They are like robots. Exactly. <laughs> they are the fitness, you know, they introduce now things like a fitness coach, GPS, things like that. You need to prove how working really hard. Well, catch me in the last period of my career. I was in Newcastle in 2006. I, want, I never want to leave the club. I will say, okay, I'll try to stay longer in here. And so Sam and I arrived with these new players, new technology, or he thought it would change the club. A new style, we call the club. No, a style, everything like that. I never spent so many hours in the bloody, uh, with the speakers around <laughs> the, the field, he's talking in the microphone. So it was difficult. Uh, I spoke to him again, say, uh, Big, uh, Big Sam, no? uh, manager, say, boss, what was, what you, you thought about me, and you want me to stay, no, we have no promise to you anything, you can go if you want to. So it sounds like, a, okay, he wants to bring his own people, you understand? He brought so many people into the club, he thought he would change his club, but you don't need to change much, you don't need to bring some good football. That's a shame because that season, when I left, I, was, I moved to West Ham, and Newcastle was that season when you were relegated. So, yeah, it's a shame, it's a shame how to the end and somewhere, and just move away from the club, I really like it, but it's part of it. you need to understand we are getting older, so you, you, you need to understand the game change. But uh, I'm enjoying very much to be in the Premier League for, for quite long. Uh, even at West Ham, I was playing a lot of games. I was 32 around there. I was playing a lot of games. I was quite surprised they don't give me another extra contract. So that's the reason I'm ending in Greece. Playing in Greece for five months. Uh, in Larissa. In Larissa. Larissa, yeah. So, and after that, I'll go back to Peru after a long time. Play for one of the big clubs called Universitario. We won the league, one zero, uh, the last game, the final, and they come back again to to England because the reason I go family, kids, you know, born in here, still around here. Play for Leicester City for a short period. I was in the playoff. We was quite close to get a promotion. Uh, moved to Hull City because the manager Nigel Person took me from Leicester City to Hull City. He was your guy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, and. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed to play in the last three, four years in England as a right back, my real position. You know, I don't need to run too much up and down as a winger. Now so, right backs are running a lot. Oh, <laughs> you know, Not the, like your time. All the time, all the time. But, uh, well, and then, then to Harlepool United. Harlepool United was more like uh, I want to just be coach because uh, Mick Watford was the manager, was assistant coach back in the year with Bobby Rosso. He called me and said, no, we can here, enjoy much you want to play football, if you play much you want. I know I'm forcing to you, uh, at the same time I do it with my coaching badge, so he helped me with this. So I'm ending the day, I'm even finishing, get sacked before December. I'm very, very lucky, the only money I'm signing me, get sacked in three months later. So, well, it was uh, to me, when as you see, you say, you come in every, every day in the morning to wake up, feel so everywhere on my legs, I say no, that's not me. That's your game, game over. So, well, for my passion is still, you know, it's difficult to walk in away from football after being so long, all my life. So you were I, assistant coach at Peru? Yes, yeah. I was assistant coach. One of your dreams, Russia. you said, I want to be a Peru coach and to take them to the World Cup? I hope so one day, what happened as a system, we qualify after 36 years. 
So this manager was amazing from Argentina called Ricardo Gareca, my boss. He, we have a very, very good time. So we was very lucky to qualify and being part of the, the staff, you know, and we achieved that for my country. Everybody was so happy over the moon. Let's talk about nowadays, Newcastle. What was the excitement in the tour in the two years ago when the deal happened to and the Mike Ashley period is over? Can you take us through this uh, period, these days of pure excitement? Well, first of all, you glad, we glad. So really, really, really happy for the fans. You know, and the fans is, uh, I know how much they love the club. It's a shame what happened in the, the years, in the last 10 years with these guys. You know, never, never engage with the people, never, never realize how important is the football for the city. So we're glad now these people arrived so far so good, you know, uh, change all these things quicker. So now you working in Newcastle, you know in Newcastle, even here in Bulgaria, all the fans follow the team, you know, exciting times. They are they are very good, good uh, what's happening now in the club. Look at the right direction. I hope so they can keep in that right direction for, for many years. And as everyone wishes, one trophy. One trophy. Doesn't matter which one. FK, Carabobo, Premier will be even better. But realistic, you have to. I hope so the, the, the club start to win things. Because you as a fan, they are so good for many years. In one moment you're impatient, I don't know how fun it will be. But uh, so glad, so so good to see the club doing so well with Eddie Hope. What do you think about Eddie? How, how did he transform playing style in your To be honest, he's so, surprised for everyone because he's different. We all respect being in Bournemouth and now in one of the big clubs in England. He, his knowledge, I like it, the way he is, a very good guy, you know, very humble guy. He's a guy understands to straight away listen to everyone what's going on. I think that's a good thing. Even he's a very young manager. So he, to me, is the expectation what everybody thought is jumping so high. You know, he's nobody expecting Newcastle this year playing Champions League. And now, you know, a couple of years ago, you was a little bit panicked to know what relegate. And now, Champions League, do his career anticipate so quick, you know, he's, he's jumping so high. At the same time, he you know how far he, will, he is with the team. Now it's, uh, it's under pressure because you, for the next season, you expect him to be to come back again into the Champions League for try to win something, you know. But it's, it's very good. It's, it's to be to be honest, he do fantastic. All the club, all the people surrounding him, he do fantastic job. We we all glad, we happy to get back again to the club, be hostage, you know, be part of involved into. To, to some weekends to watch the match. It's lovely. It's lovely to see everybody happy in the club. Fingers crossed to Newcastle get some titles and from the coach point of view, what makes this Newcastle system now, any house system so special with all the intensity, yeah, with all the injuries this season, but they are running running and don't stop running from That's the first to the nineties that with all respect, I will say, if you see Newcastle, uh, individuals, you don't have a superstar. That's the reason any new, if it, everybody needs one, even the kid one. So everybody has to be in the same way. That's Newcastle. Newcastle, when they lost a few, you can tell some games, because so many people play so many games, it starts affecting them. Injuries, things like that, and the team drop. But that's the, the strong, I will say the strong knowledge, the strong Newcastle is really, really strong when everybody's fit. Because that team, if you don't run, can get results. That's to me very practical. Do you want to see Newcastle build them? They have a, I don't know, 20 times chances in any game. No. These guys working really hard. Everybody understood their own job. Everybody must to run, must to work hard. Then they will get results. That's the reason Newcastle finished very well last season and it's still very hard thing to be because when they play at home they're the most What do you expect from the game tonight against Tottenham at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Yeah, you will see probably, okay, people already say, oh, injuries, injuries. So already the excuse is here yeah. to say, I think, you, I think Eddie just need to go for the match. 
Tottenham start so well and now in the last few games as well. He dropped him, lost at home the last the last game against West Ham. So it will be a very interesting game. We got opportunity to 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 the young boys, you know, people will be available to, to show whether what they can do for the club. So it's a big test. So it's fifty fifty because I believe it's both them, maybe even Spurs, you know, in that great form, how it started the league now in the last four matches, it started dropping a little bit. And Newcastle in these difficult moments, you don't know. But Eddie sometimes surprised. When, you, when nobody expecting Newcastle to have a good result, you know, all the time, bang, happened with Chelsea. Everybody was so, no, Chelsea would, would be tough, winning for one. So it's, it's always unpredictable with Newcastle. Yeah, it just scored some great goals against them, yes. right? Remember, top four battle, a lot of clubs vying for top four now. Seven, eight, nine, how many? Well, it's like I'm saying, it, it will be a difficult season. I mean, it's already difficult. Uh, but even probably we think in Liverpool and Manchester City, they are you know, a favorite to win this league again. But as you see, it dropping so many points. Last, last season, you know, Manchester City flying. They disappear. But this season is, even though you don't know who is going to finish in the top eight, so it's very tricky season. Because Aston Villa are doing well. Uh, friends, Brentford, Brighton, teams you normally expect them to get down, now it's get there. So it will be really, really top season. How was last night with Bulgaria and Jordi? <laughs> Did you enjoy your time here? Let's say that you are here because of the Newcastle official supporters, Bulgarian. Well, first of, all, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for your support. I never realized how much the passion is here around here too. I had the opportunity to meet them before in Newcastle. I can't remember which game it was, but they come over over the Newcastle. It was a nice, a nice again to come to you, to your home. And you know, like I'm saying, I lost a lot of members around here in Bulgaria. Love the country, love the people. Lovely fans, so I would say to them, thank you very much for last night. It's good to, even I was not playing football for so long, and they made me feel like I only just still playing football. So thank you very much for your support, and thank you for, for this moment. You come again, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this great interview, Mr. Sula. No, it was really pleasure. Okay. You're one of my childhood heroes, and that's a dream come true to make this interview. Right? No, I wish, I wish you all the best. I wish you all the lovely country. You feel pretty similar like my country, you know, the way you drive, yeah. uh, the way it's here is completely different. So, no, I wish you Bulgaria national team, Bulgaria football to improve and uh, I hope to see more superstars around the world. Thank you very much, cheers. You're welcome. How it all started in the late uh, 80s, starting from Lima, from Peru, to become a Premier League great. <laughs> Well, first of all, <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be here in Bulgaria. I'm talking to you behind the cameras. It's amazing how many years happened when I moved to have the opportunity to be here in your country. And the second time again, it's a pleasure. And uh, well, I'm start there. Of course, my career in, in my country, in Peru. I was only 11 years old when my dad had the opportunity to, to see another famous Peruvian player back in the year to ask him to give me opportunity to, to, to go on trial at one of the best clubs in Peru called Alianza Lima. So that's the start of my career there, when I was only 11 years old and after, as you know, when you kids, when you young player, you have a dream. Play first of all for the national team. So my, my, my dream come true to play for Peru. Even not started with the professional team, but play with the under 70s in the national team play under 20s in the national team, of course under 23 and the first team. So that's all my dreams come true. I'm so happy and so glad what I did in my career. It, it, it was like, a, you know, when, when you as a young player, your first dream is play professional football. So I was only 17 when I had my debut, my first game in Peruvian League, and that was 1992. So from there, I started my career to play professional football and got the opportunity to, to play for another big club in Peru called Sporting Cristal. So we play 
I played five years, I spent five years with them in 1992, uh, won the lead three times in a row, and got the opportunity when I was 20 years old to move to Argentina. To Boca? To Boca, Boca yeah. Wow. A lot of experience it was. Well, first of all, <laughs> I, I never, we, for us players in South America, especially players from Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, Paraguay, our best league in South America is like Brazil, to play in Brazil or Argentina, the one of the strongest leagues. Like in, in Europe, is going to Germany or going to Spain or go to England. So I have the opportunity, it was a dream, you know, when my agent told me, listen, that's Boca Junior interested in yourself, they want to sign with you, I was over the moon. So it happened, so it was, to me, it was amazing. It was like a dream, play with one of the best clubs in the world. And after class, I never thought I would play with my idol. I never thought we had Maradona next to me as a teammate. It was another huge thing happened in my career, you know, being next to him, met him. He was a lovely, lovely man. Uh, it was amazing. He always, always supported very much new teammates. So I tell you, I was really, really happy to go, first of all, to play one of the best clubs, important clubs in the world, like Boca Junior, and play with my idol was an, another plus. Is it uh, right that uh, he nicknamed you my street or what are yeah. you in the to be a nicknamed like this by well, the host Maradona? My, what happened is, uh, when, when I signed for Boca Junior, I'm still playing with my Peruvian team because the, the part of the contract uh, has to stay until the final of the competition. We play Copa Libertadores, it's like a Champions League here in Europe. Yeah. So I only arrived when we play the final, arrived three days before the start of the league. So what happened, we started to, in the training ground, I mean, the first day was on Friday, we played Sunday, and the, uh, I was, you know, with Maradona, I was over the moon, talking to him, and after we finished the practice, um, Diego, start to pick up balls and with the goalkeeper and the wall to practice free kicks. Free kicks. Oh. So I was sitting very shy, so I was <laughs> and leaving him. And after my, my ex-coach, my manager said, uh, Norberto, go practice with Diego. Diego told me. <laughs> I was so nervous, I go with, with him. I just let him to hit kick, kick, and after I was at the same time nervous, but I was excited. So we start to practice and then start to bend the ball in the corners and the table like this. Hey, coach, where are you bring this guy from? My street. Yes. <laughs> so what happened? We have the debut. We won 4-2. He scored. And, uh, and after we had to be in the press conference and he gave me the best compliments, you know. I never expected him because we are next to the next my, my street, or, you know, need a master. So it was for me, you know, best debut I can have. It. He gave me the best compliments in football, he gave me so much leave. It's not easy going to Argentina playing football because it's a pressure. So it was amazing. He was very, very good to me. I'm glad. It's a shame he's not here with us anymore. He passed away too early. Did you invite him at your wedding? It was a wife TV <laughs> wedding in Peru? What happened with my wedding always? Uh, <laughs> Tell about uh, this story. Yeah, well, the, what happened is my football agent from Argentina traveling to Peru, and the next guy next to him was a owner of television in Peru. So myself played for Boca Junior, it was quite, at, at the moment was quite uh, big. You know, I was all the time in the news, things like that. Quite important play, because we in Peru we don't have uh, too many players around the world. So my agent told him, listen, uh, uh, I represent Norway Sorano, and the guy said, oh really? He would have his wedding in December. It was arranged around November when he met me. Do you happy to, do you want to put on his wedding? Maradona will come, Canilla, Riquelme, all of these famous, that would be good for you. And the guy said, oh, why not? So the guy paid for my wedding, all the cost of money, it was a lot of money, and the, the guy said, I will pay, but I want to record it. And Maradona never come, never been in a wedding. But you were invited to him? I invited him, I knew he would come, I knew he would come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my agent just make a good deal for me, but Maradona never come. 
How did it happen, the transfer to Newcastle? There were a lot of offers. Yeah, my my agent know Arsenal, yeah? Yeah, I was Arsenal too. When the, my, my agent told me, listen, he's interested in maybe Arsenal and Newcastle. So what happened is, uh, one of the, my agent friends knew it, uh, Kenny Douglas. So Douglas saw me through videos back in the years, tape, they have a, saw me and they straight away he said, oh, I want this player here. So I was very pleased and very happy to Kenny give me the opportunity to move into the English football. Everything new, everything different. It was really, really hard in the beginning because not speaking the language. But I always I'm saying no excuse to no play or no perform because football in Bulgaria, Peru, China, Japan, it's the same, the same way. You have to play the football in the, in the same way. So I was believing in my, myself was in the beginning a tough period because sometimes the communication is quite important but through training you know the players special guy speed god bless him he was the first guy always tried to help so it was very nice to me and to be honest i was quite lucky because after three four months i'm getting home without speak much of language and getting into the team everything new english football very direct football she gave it to alan shira alan shira second ball boom <laughs> Or get the ball in the plan and the wings, cross the ball, that's that's the game. Three touches, we're already in the next box. So it was a lot of, uh, you know, that little bit for me in the beginning was quite difficult. Because you know, sometimes in South America we build it, we have the ball, we play from the back to go forward. But here it was trying to understand straight away what's going on, so adapting quicker. So yeah, I was. I was like, uh, was lucky, like I'm saying, to to recognize what's going on, how this football, and and suit the straight away. You are also saying uh, that uh, all the time you are saying that uh, you are an adopted Jordi. How uh, <laughs> you fell in love with Newcastle? Was it straight away? How they received you when you first came over there? I think uh, seven thousand people when was I had my first, debut. Uh, yeah, it was you, training. You, you know what? Uh, when you footballer, I, I believe is. When you feel uh, the passion of the people, you engage quicker. I was feeling straight away that, like you mentioned, I never realized uh, they will come to play with the reserve team, you know, practice game, and uh, 7,000 people to see what's going on. I didn't realize it wasn't for me, honestly. But you engage so quick, so fast, because it was quite strange in the beginning, you know, going into Newcastle. Not see no many people around in the street, very quiet, you know, town. But when the games arrive on the Saturday, you see all the people you never see in the week, in the midweek, and they see in the weekend. So, with all that passion, all the engage, you love football. I like it, play football. It's a, for me, it's a, you know, every time we play in St. James Park, for me, it was an extra motivation, you know, because it's lovely to see all the stand 52. But, Back in the year, what we started 36, with 42,000 42, people, and now it's ending with 52,000 people. Doesn't matter how the team doing, that was to me amazing. That was really great. They are pro really, really good, good fans, you know, because I never see this stadium empty. Doesn't matter who is in charge, doesn't matter how the team doing, always the support in there. So that's why I really, really like it. And so have my family, all my kids born over there. So. A lot of friends, not only with football, outside football. So I'm still living, even I was working in Peru for like the last a year and a year with the national team as assistant coach, and now back to Newcastle again. So I'm still around with you. You are a free kick specialist, but not a lot of goals from open play. That was because uh, back then there was a guy called Alan Shearer at the center forward. <laughs> it's to the man, it's to the man. <laughs> Yes, I'm, to be honest, uh, I was quite specialist to set pieces. You know, I had to take the opportunity to set pieces. So, well, Alan, you know what? Probably down. Will you do it? 